Where is he? Out his corner. Hello everyone, so we are off looking for some elderflowers today because yes. we're going to make some elderflower yes. champagne. Yes, we got to find the buffalo. Yeah, uh, we're also looking for the gruffalo apparently according to the brew hobbit who's uh, coming around to help me out today. So um, yeah, let's go and find some elderflowers and then have a chat about how we're going to make this elderflower champagne. Say hello Thomas. Hey. Right, what you found, Thomas? Magic flowers. Magic flowers. So these are elder flowers. Um, they're quite easy to identify. They grow on a sort of uh, well, elder trees, or sometimes they're kind of bushy shrubs. Um, you just want the uh, flower heads, not necessarily the whole branch, like Thomas has managed to get there. That's it. Put it in the bag. Well done. So they're quite distinctive these kind of light sort of um, fluffy kind of star shaped little flowers in big bunches um, they're very very common in hedgerows uh, this is what it looks like looking a bit further back so for the recipe I'm doing which I'll put up once we get back to the house and start making it you want about uh, eight to ten of these per gallon or five four or five liters that you're making I'm gonna make about 10 litres. You got more? Yeah. Well done. I'm going to make about 10 litres, so I'm going to be collecting um, about 18 to 20 of these flower heads. So let's uh, bag these up. So not all <coughs> elder trees will be the same, so do judge the aroma of the flowers when you're picking them to see uh, whether or not it's a good batch. So some of them do have a more uh, musky kind of cat pee type smell to them um, and you want to try and find a tree that's got a nice that nice light sort of slightly sweet floral aroma to it these ones smell pretty good to me so let's uh, get some more in the bag and chuck them in Tom in the bag well done so we're back home now and I've got my bag of elderflowers here um, these are the remaining ingredients that we're going to need. So sugar is the obvious one. Uh, I'm going to put in about um, 1.6 kilos of sugar into 10 litres. Then we've got some lemons. So I'm going to use six of those zested and juiced going in to the must as well. I've got a little bit of white grape juice concentrate you could probably use two of these in the 10 litre batch but I'm just going to use the one um, keep it fairly light that's there to give the wine a little bit more body and depth of flavour yeast nutrient teaspoon of that and then our yeast to ferment with so champagne yeast is probably the best option but I didn't have time to get any of that so I've just got a packet of the universal wine yeast again Two packs would probably be a good idea for 10 litres, but I only got the one, so it should be fine. We'll see. Uh, that's it, really. So, going to get the um, flowers off of uh, those elder flower heads and then chuck it all in the bucket. Right, so let's start preparing the must for this wine. So, I like to remove the flowers off of the stalks on these. Some, some people will just chuck the whole lot straight into the bucket as it is. Um, but you don't really want the flavour that you're going to get from the, the stalks going in there. Um, it's all in the flowers themselves, so easiest way to do it. This is a little bit of a tedious task, but the easiest way to do it is to get a fork and just kind of run it over them like this, and it will fairly quickly strip the flowers off. You'll still get a little bit of uh, the stems going in with it, but obviously you're leaving behind all the thick, uh, heavy stalks on there and we'll end up with a nice big bowl full of the little flower heads there so I'm going to crack on with that and then show you what we do with the rest of the ingredients. Right so that's all of the flower heads taken off. We now need to sort our lemons out so we're going to 
Uh, take the zest off of these. I'm just going to use a bog standard potato peeler to do that quickly and then juice them uh, into here. Uh, so six lemons, zested and juiced. So there's your juice and zest of six lemons in there. Again, we can just chuck them in, um, you know, halve the lemons and chuck them in whole, but uh, the pith from the lemons can um, add quite a bit of bitterness to the, to the brew, and obviously you don't necessarily get all of the juice kind of extracted, so that's um, gonna help to give the acidity to the, the wine that we want. So that's ready. The flowers are ready, uh, just need to weigh out the sugar and then chuck it into the bucket and we're good to go. Okay, so we've got all of our ingredients in the bucket there. So that's your lemon juice, yeast nutrient, elderflowers, grape juice concentrate and um, sugar. And I'm going to add to that a couple of litres of boiling water. So the bucket has been sanitised with star sand prior to this and obviously the boiling water will also help to sanitise the ingredients and the container itself. So I'm just going to give it all a good stir, try and get all that sugar dissolved. Don't be surprised if you see a few dead bugs and stuff floating around in there. Um, it's pretty impossible to get rid of those off of all of the older flowers before they go in, but it shouldn't be a problem. So we'll just stir this round, get it all nicely dissolved, and then we're going to top it up with cold water to 10 litres, and then that will hopefully be at temperature suitable for pitching the yeast in depending on how cold your tap water is. Um, if it's too hot, so you want it around room temperature for pitching your yeast, if it's too hot then just allow it to cool down for a while before you put the yeast in. Okay so that looks like it's all pretty much dissolved to me, so I'm going to top it up with the cold water now. Right so I've topped it up to about 10 litres now. Um, and you want to give it a real good kind of stir at this point to try and get as much air into that must as possible. So we're aerating the wort, not the wort, the must. Uh, getting confused with my beer making there. Um, a slotted spoon or whatever you've got or even a whisk is really good for this. So we just want to try and get as much oxygen into there as possible. And that's to help the yeast out. So. If you were chucking in the cold water from a good height, you'll have done a little bit of aeration that way. But yeah, give it a good stir, make sure everything's nicely combined and get as much oxygen into that as possible. So I'd say a few, good few minutes, five minutes or so, um, stirring it up. Well, you can shake it about in the FV or Demijohn if you've got a decent seal on it uh, to do the same thing. So I'll just stir this for a little bit longer. It is still quite warm. So I think it's about 27, 28 degrees, which is a little on the hot side. So we don't want to chuck the yeast in just yet. So I will seal this up and then um, pitch the yeast in a few hours later once it's cooled down. So that's it for now. So yeah, I'm going to seal this up, um, pop it somewhere cool for a bit, and then we will be pitching our wine yeast later on okay so that's it for now fingers crossed this will come out all right actually one more thing before we go so i've just taken a quick gravity reading and um you probably won't be able to see it on there but it's looking like it's at about 10 64 which is fairly low for a um for a wine but i wanted this to be quite uh, quite a light kind of sparkling wine, you know, it's kind of summer drink or whatever, but um, You can obviously boost that up if you want to have a higher percentage So if you want it closer to kind of 12 13 percent when it finishes You would probably want to add um, some more sugar in there or um, Other fermentables so obviously the grape juice as well will also add to that But if it comes out um, 
If it ferments out quite dry down to about 990, then that would still come out just under 10%, um, with this being a universal wine yeast rather than the champagne yeast that I mentioned before. Um, it might not finish quite as dry as that and come out a little bit sweeter. So uh, we'll have to wait and see, but either way, like I said, I wanted a slightly lighter um, alcohol wine for this, so uh, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, and it's, if you want it stronger, just add more, more sugar to it. So uh, yeah, so let's um, tuck this away and then I'll update in another video once, um, once it's off and fermenting and um, I'm ready to kind of put it in the keg and get it carbonated. I'm the dude, so that's what you call me, you know, uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino. If